I poked my head in. <laughs> if I don't enjoy a while, you get prepares for the program tonight. Hey guys, they said just to do the housekeeping, so look, I'm hiding my face now. Got that? What does that say? Can you read that through the mirror there? Logan? Mondama. Mondama! Where's Mondama? Ipswich. Oh, Ipswich. Okay. Hi. <laughs> hey, everyone from Mondama and Ipswich, if you're watching. Zoe says hi. Yeah, hi. <laughs> She's gorgeous, isn't she? I see. I can't upstage these gorgeous, beautiful women. Oh, you can say oh, come on. You come beautiful. on. <laughs> it's going to be a fun, it's going to be a good night tonight because Zoe's going to share her awesome story of um, being down that highway of destruction, as we call it, and out of that pit of hell from ice addiction. Mm. Um, we'll, we'll get all serious and stuff about that because it is a serious subject, guys, and it's it's one that's like I was talking to someone today and we we're talking about how it's not like any other drug. No, it's not. Not at all. But I'll leave that to Andrea and you when Andrea gets back. At the moment, I'm doing as Andrea calls the housework, <laughs> a.k.a. housekeeping. <laughs> We'd like to thank, at the moment, we're, we're coming into our new building. We Did you know? the front Zoe. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yes. It's really nice, guys. It really is. So thank you to Southport Signorama. If you need signs done, call 5591 3933. How's that? 5591 3933. If you need any um, Signorama done, signage. Signage done from Signorama <laughs> Southport. <laughs> <laughs> We're fluking this, guys, tonight. Gardener yeah. Cars, we want to absolutely, passionately, yeah. totally want to give you the biggest, biggest AAIC bear hug to um, to Gardener Cars who have um, do donated um, a good amount of money f for the end of financial year. Every car that they sold, they donated a certain amount. Hey? No, I don't know. I'm allowed to tell you. I'm not I'm sure not. if I'm going to tell you so much. Oh, yeah. But it was a lovely it's amount. A and amount. We, just, we just want to thank you, Gardner Cars, for being one of our biggest sponsors. Another one of our biggest sponsors is Mercer and Cooper. Cooper. <laughs> Sorry. Mercer and Cooper Realty. You won't forget that in a hurry. Mm -hmm. Mercer and Cooper Realty. If you, for any investment real, reality, realty needs, real estate needs, please call Bernice or Matt, won't you, at Mercer and Cooper Realty. I'm reading from the ones here. Restore 21, Girls from Transformations. Oh, yes, Restore 21. I want to thank um, Sue and the team there. We go in once a week with testimonies. Mm -hmm. And not only do we give out, or that, do our team give their testimonies, the boys there are sharing their testimonies as we see them grow through the rehab and become new new men, new men um, out of addiction. And it's been an absolute privilege to see these guys that sometimes come and do work for us here at the office. And I just want to thank you guys, um, the team there at uh, Restore 21. Girls from Transformations, we have our work therapy happening here every week. Awesome. Lots happening over here, and it's really good because it's all part of rehab. It's all yeah. part of becoming a new person and creating those new neurological pathways in the melon, as our George likes to call it, and um, getting getting some work therapy is nothing like it. It's, it's absolutely getting you back into the workforce and um, giving you that experience. Our op shop helpers, setting up our op shop. We've got a garage sale happening in the next couple of weeks, we exciting. hope. We hope. We hope. Stay tuned. Watch this space. That's all exciting. So I'd like to thank, we would like to thank Cece, Stella, Stormy and Paul for helping us put, in, put our op shop together. If this could be a travelling camera, I'd love to show you and give you a, a, um, a view of the op shop. It's looking great. Let me put it that way. It's looking great. So we need donations if we're having an op shop. We need yeah. donations of um, clothes, jewellery, uh, little trinkets, um, anything you feel that you'd want to donate so that we could raise money. Everything made, um, sold at the op shop goes directly to Australian Anti-Ice Campaign so that we can go into the schools and, yeah. and do the workshops and stuff on the kids. We've got, can, nobody can see, we've got a sign here. It's um, promoting our ride against ice. It's happening on the October 24th. Saturday, 10 a.m., meeting at Meakin Road, Kingston, Queensland. Um, watch this space for more promotion as that time gets closer for that, for the ride against ice. And you know you can go to our website, all the W's, australianantiicecampaign.org.au. 
for more information about that, you think I'm funny, don't you, Donny? <laughs> it's all right, we'll be introducing the incomparable on the Ray Sims. <laughs> So we're partnering with the Chariots of Light and the Vietnam Vets um, on the poker run for the Ride Against Ice. So chain Facebook. I don't normally like to do this with papers, but anyway, it is what it is. Oh, I'm so excited about this next one. Guess yeah. what? Yeah. Guys, if you live nearby, come down to Pacific Fair, Pack Fair, next Thursday from the 10 a.m. onwards and support us. We're going to have an outreach table there. And guess what? You can meet me. <laughs> If you want to get crazy, let's get crazy together at the Throwing a hat, Andrea, like I do to you. Are you going to throw me? <laughs> Here we go. What are we doing? What's she going to turn me into? It's, uh, it's full reception. It's full reception? It's fine. It'll oh. be fine. It all works out. Come on, let's put on our hats. Relative Yay. Not even once, Caps. Come on, check them out on our website. Oh, it looks too big for me. I look a bit funny. Do I look funny? Is it's that because I'm not trying to know? Oh, because it's still got the, the new thing in it. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, we've got hats, we've got merchandise. Um, and I've got to do that. And so check out our website for merchandise. Okay, we're just a family of fun and games here tonight. Um, Instagram is a, oh, Instagram is at AAIC.2 if you want to check us out on Instagram. And at Australian Anti Ice and Twitter is at Ost Anti Ice at A A U S T Anti Ice. If you want to check us out on those um, social media play pages, yes. is that if we're still looking for those? Are we? Yep. We're still looking for these. The boss tells me to say, ask for donations for blankets, sleeping bags, and on the, for our on the, on the streets program. So if you've got any blankets and sleeping bags that you'd like to donate or money towards that, we'd love to hear from you guys so that we can help those that are out on the street in this cold weather at the moment. So, all right. I, my, not even once. Pardon? Not even once. Not even not once, guys. Yeah, not really? even once. <laughs> yeah. I can't do it, but, you know, yeah. pretend I am. Not even once. And so at this time, let me <coughs> do my... Intro to the most incomparable, the most wonderful boss that anybody I could have on earth. Here is Andrea Simmons. I am sure. I am just sure that she should have been a comedian. Honestly, Leanne, you just keep us laughing in here every day. She's just such a bubble of laughter and joy and just blessings to this team. So thank you, Leanne. I was going to like push in and barge and squeeze you both in the middle, but we've got the social distancing thing oh, yeah. to worry about. So I was going to squish her in here and say, oh, I want to hear the story too. <laughs> you look beautiful in that hat, by the way. Oh, it really you. suits you. Okay, yeah. <laughs> More beautiful every day. Um, guys, you can purchase your hat on our shop. So www.australianantiicecampaign.org.au 100% of the proceeds go towards what we do. Everything in our shop, whether it's the training, whether it's a CD or a t-shirt, um, everything that you purchase there um, goes towards helping us continue our work here. Because we're not government funded and we still need to pay for lights, and, um, internet um, and uh, all the other overheads, rent and everything that we have um, for our offices. So everything goes towards helping and just one more note, I, I do want to do a huge shout out. I know Leanne did all the housework, and she's very good at housework. Housekeeping. Um, housekeeping, that, yeah, that thing. Um, but I just wanted to mention, we have been given a house um, from the council, um, and we want to make that a drop-in centre. Um, they gave us the house, but we have to find a block of land for it. Yeah, wow. so we um, we have the house, we're going to do it up and we're going to make that a drop-in centre with some counselling rooms and um, where we can help people and do interventions and help them create pathways into recovery. But we need your help, yeah, so I'm not really sure how we're going to get this block yet, um, you know, we're, we're doing a 
shout out to you, to all, everybody that follows um, us and has been through this journey or has family members that have been through this journey. Um, you know, we're doing a lot of work on the streets at the moment and we're seeing the need there, yeah, um, and to do intervention. And uh, we really, really want to get this um, drop-in centre up and running. So if anybody's got any ideas um, or any suggestions or a block of land that they're not going to use for some time, um, please reach out to us because we really want to get um, this happening. Yeah, we've got another, we've got a month, I believe, to make a decision. Um, otherwise, we'll end up losing the house. Um, and they'll give it to another charity, but we, we think it's really, really important that um, we really want to get this up and going. So had to do that um, shout out, let you know what's going on. Um, and yeah, from, from there I'm going to introduce our amazing guest tonight. Thank you Zoe. Um, Zoe has driven a long way to come here and talk to you tonight. Um, and because of her heart, because of her heart to see the cat peeves set free. Mm -hmm. um, and what that means is that, you know, like myself, Zoe has travelled that path of addiction and she just wants to see that next person be set free. Yeah. So yep. Zoe, thank you for travelling all that way to come on the show tonight and you know, you're part of the ARC family and, and you have been for a little while um, doing amazing work in you know, helping people um, and, and yourself and your family come back, back together and but also helping people over the phone and um, and, and people that want to, you know, change their life. So thank you for budding the people that you already have. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, thank you for your heart for um, for wanting to set the country free. Because mm -hmm. that's really, really um, so important to you, isn't it? Yes, it is, yeah. Tell me a little bit about, I know you're part of our Ipswich team, so as you're talking to me, um, um, we're, we're letting the people out there know we are putting together an Ipswich team, guys. I was part of that team. Um, if you are in the Ipswich area and you want to help, then you want to join and you want to support and you want to uh, provide donations or offices or just be part, volunteer some of your time, please get in touch with us because we are uniting that team at this time um, you know, for, for what's coming up in the future. Yeah. But um, I know you're a little bit about your story, Zoe, and it's massive. And yeah. I, I really am grateful that you wanted to share. Um, it's been a while coming. Um, but it's only our stories. You know, the power of the testimony sets the captive free. Yeah. 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 So tell me a little bit about your, um, your background, your upbringing, um, and what landed you using drugs. Yeah. Okay. So... Uh, I came from a broken home, so there was a lot of brokenness. Um, my parents were never together from age two. Um, my mum was actually quite involved in drugs until I was eight, and then she got, um, she became a Christian, and she got set free herself. Um, I had a lot of, uh, I had been sexually abused when I was a child, and not counselled for that, and then I was actually raped at 13, and I would become suicidal, and using drugs, using speed and all that kind of stuff off and on and I just didn't know my worth yeah. and the value, um, my value and um, I kind of got off of it, you know, after I went into psychosis and nearly lost my, my oldest son who's 23 now, I nearly lost him and I was like snapped out of it when, when I went to the doctor and I was in psychosis, he said if you don't stop using drugs you're going to stay like that and I was like oh Okay, yeah. And it snapped me out at that time. Yeah. Um, a while, m many years, or a few years later, I got with my husband, um, who I'm still married to, but, um, and he was actually had a very successful concreting business, yeah. and he had to work day shift and night shift, day shift and night shift. And um, about two years prior to that, I had a work accident and I couldn't work, so the pressure was on him to make all the money and I couldn't work anymore. Um, so they said, and um, my husband, we just had a newborn little girl, and my husband got this these crazy hours, and he was just swallowing um, crack, and he thought, oh, it's just like, it's okay, it's just like old school speed, you know, like I can stop it. Yeah. And then um, his friend taught him how to smoke it. Right. So then he was getting that whole euphoria, the rush, because yeah. I'm a sure, yeah, well, um, I have had to eat it once, and you don't get that whole... Um, like that for it, yeah, feeling. Um, and then, you know, before I knew it, he was using it every day, even on his days off. Mm. And um, 
after a year and I'd stopped breastfeeding my daughter, I was like, what's going on with him? Like, you know, but um, I want to try this. So I tried it and it was the worst thing. Like, it was such a great high. Like, I'm not going to lie to you, the high was so like nothing else. And um, before I knew it, I was actually addicted to it. It made me the super mom that I could do everything for my kids. I could get everything done and everything was perfect mm. to look at, but in my mind it wasn't. Um, and our marriage um, fell apart very quickly. Mm. Um, I lost, we lost our three of our children, the three of our youngest children. Um, How did, what, what do you mean lost? Like, did you, did they die? What happened? No, so um, because of the um, crack, there was a lot of, become a lot of domestic violence and, you know, we were both as bad as each other. I'm not going to say it was all him, it was all me, it was both of us. Yeah. Um, and we just fought so much. And um, I was actually, um, yeah, the person that I was reaching out to tell to help me was actually reporting me to the department. And, um, yeah, and they didn't help me. They reported me and thought that would be the best way to get my children remo removed. Yeah. And it was... Just that uh, full on down spiral from there. Like, um, so you had three kids, and I have four kids, but the oldest one's 23, so he wasn't at home at this time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this was in 2015. So one, my oldest son, like the next oldest was 12 at this time, and then the younger, the boy, other boy was nine, and then my daughter, um, she was two and a half. Yeah. So it was like, you know, just. Yeah, it was so, so traumatic for them. Yeah. Um, so they came, in, they came, did they come to your house and then they take the kids? Um, so what happened was they were doing like a family intervention um, thing where they would come, they would say, oh, I'm not going to take your kids off you. And I was always, I've always been, well, I'm going to tell the truth, you know, yeah. um, no matter what, and I'll yeah. just own it. And I didn't really, I've never really cared about what anyone said for to me. Yeah. Um, to me now it's a good thing. Back then it was probably something that really the department could work against me, but I was so open because I was, my husband um, had actually cut his arm with a um, drop saw and he couldn't work. So I thought, okay, well, by this time we're both raging, you know, had both had a raging habit. So well, I'm going to sell drugs and I'm going to make money and we're going to still do the drugs and everything's going to be sweet. Yeah. But it just, honestly, I, I, we lost so much. We lost, yeah. you know, brand new Nissan Patrol. We lost our kids. We lost our our who we are, we lost ourselves, like it just robbed us of everything yeah. that good, everything good that you have, ice is going to take off you, yeah. that is what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they, they were actually coming and they, they were saying to me, well, you know, you're actually providing for your kids still and everything, but um, as the domestic violence was going on and um, people were ringing up and even some of the stuff they said wasn't correct but because it was told to them it was like the gospel you yeah, know? yeah. so they had to act on it I guess and they didn't really investigate as well as they should and they didn't say to me if I didn't leave they were going to take my kids they just said to me um, it came one day I remember they said how much do you love your husband I said oh no how much do you love your kids and I said oh, you know that I love my kids what are you talking about and she goes, well, pack a bag and leave now. And I said, no. I said, oh, you can just F off because mm -hmm. nothing's happened at this moment. Yeah. You know, but they'd had a report that something did. And um, I remember I was at the hospital with my son who was nine. He'd had a bad car accident, nearly lost his leg. Um, and, you his know, son was nine and he had a car accident. Yeah, he was in a car accident. Oh, he was in such yeah, a he was in, driving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he nearly lost his um, leg. And at that, that time, it was a few months after, and they said the best chance is amputation. And this day on the way home from the hospital, I've got docs ringing me, where are you, Zoe? We've already got your daughter. And now I want the other two boys. And I was just like, what? This can't be happening. It was like a... A nightmare come true, really. It was the worstest pain that I've ever experienced. Um, yeah, I bet you never thought that that would happen. No, like I didn't. While you were using, you thought, yeah. oh, yeah, that's just threats. They're never really going to take yeah. that. Picture. And I thought, you know, I'm a good mum. I, you know, I, I saw myself as a good mum. Yeah. I took my kids to my, my the, the 
the 17 year old now, I'd take him to rugby league and um, rugby union and he was in sports every single day of the week. He probably just didn't even have a day off. It was all about the kids. Yeah. I'd done everything for the kids. I fed them, I cooked for them. They tried to say my kids were, I wasn't feeding my kids, but my son was like, um, I think he was like 90 kilos at 12 years old. Yeah. And they tried to say I didn't feed yeah, him, yeah. but that was a lie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, um, I just want to say like, you know, if you're in this situation and um, you just got no idea, like, the cloud of that um, confusion mm -hmm. and, you know, you think you're all right, but you, you're not. Yeah. And your kids are not because, yeah. you know, my kids, I've been out of active addiction since 2017, the end of 2017, November, and it still affects my voice. It still affects my voice. It still does. My son is still ashamed, you know. And, um, like, even said to me, Mum, why are you going on this thing? And I said, well, son, you don't need to be ashamed anymore because everyone knows that I was on drugs. Yeah. You should be proud now yeah. that I'm off, That's you know. And I said, I'm going to help other people. Yeah. You know, I didn't go through all this for nothing. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah. I love your heart because it is, it's by sharing this story. And I know that there are people out there because I'm working with some girls that have kids and they're like, oh, I'm managing okay, my kids aren't going without, it'll be okay, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll just, you know, wing it when docs come, you know, I'll just, you know, they'll see that the kids are all right. And, you know, you always think that you're okay when you're using and mm -hmm. you always think that that won't happen to you and that it'll be all right and that you'll get away with it, you know, because that's what, when you're in ice addiction, that's what, how your brain works, yeah. right? But I just want you to hear this, guys. If somebody sent you this link, you know, maybe you need to hear this lesson. You need to hear this lesson, mm. okay? Because Zoe had a very huge price to pay and a huge amount of pain to go through and is still working through the pain that's been caused by uh, the active addiction and her choices, mm. yeah? So... It, it is important that, you know, you look at the impact, the long-term impact. You may not see it right now, but it's important that you see that long-term impact that it's going to have on your kids later on. Yeah, yeah, and I'm pretty sure now, and this is what I've heard in the media, is if you actually get tested positive once yeah. for ice, you lose your kids. There's no second chances. Yeah, yeah. So, and honestly, guys, like... Um, there are some sick people out there, you know, um, that will take advantage of your kids when you're a week old and you've been up and you end up passing out. They will take advantage of them. They, it yeah. just does yeah. some weird stuff to your mind, you know. And, and at the end of the day, that this is not worth losing your kids. Like, it's imagine trying to grieve for your child, but they're still alive. And, you know, like, yeah. with, with my daughter... Um, when she was in care of docs, she was actually sexually abused. And I'm still trying to deal with that with my daughter, yeah. you know, um, with my sons. Like, my, one of my sons is so affected by it. That they, you know, it's like you don't have no idea what yeah. done to that little nine, ten year old boy to wake up to his daughter, uh, to his sister, mm -hmm. screaming, um, don't touch me there, you know, like stuff like that. Yeah. What happens then when you can't take it back, you know, and you want to die because it's so painful, but then you know you're not going to see your kids and you're never going to make it right. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I hope you're here. Thank you for talking from the depths of your mm. uh, of, of your heart, Zoe, and mm. really speaking the truth in love because, you know, unless people out there hear this, they're not going to know um, what goes on and what, what, you know, I want you to hear this message, guys, you know. This is a long-term impact on a family just by the choices you make. You know, to stay, you know, let's have a good time and use and feel good for a minute. The long-term impact of this is phenomenal and deep and, in, you know, it's just incredible. You don't mm -hmm. want to go through this. You know, if you if you are you know thinking of of touching this drug, it'll entrap you for life. You know, it mm. will affect your life and your family's life. And we don't want that for you. No, right? we don't want that for you. And if you're using and you're thinking it's okay and that it's not going to impact everybody else around you, think again. You know, you can hear it from the horse's mouth. Mm. You can hear it. You know, it's not just uh, you know the the people in your workplace or just the, your friends that it impacts. It'll impact deep. Mm. You know, family members and relatives and parents and, you know, loved ones. I want to go back a little bit, Zoe, and I hear the, the, the pain. I want people to hang on to that for a minute. Mm. I want to go back to, um, 
you know, I guess when you first started using, I mean, I hear the trauma, right? And, and you know, there's, there's a lot of underlying issues why people use. Um, but I want to go back to what, because that, that's very common to get for young girls, right? Mm -hmm. um, to go through um, sexual abuse and rape. That mm -hmm. happens a lot, yeah? Um, and I want to go back to what your thought process was, because there may be girls out there that, you know, might be watching this show um, that, you know, stuff happens to them and they don't deal with it. I want to, mm. um, I want to hear what your thought process was and why, why didn't you reach out for help? Yeah, okay. Yeah, when I was on the crack, why didn't um, I? Before, before, when I was... When you I was, just got sexually abused yeah, and okay. you were raped Yeah, stuff. it was just really out? that um, it wasn't, I wasn't um, counselled right. I didn't have the right supports in place. And I think that's so important is the right supports in place. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the thing is that people would like to say that you're lying or, you know, to, um, turn a blind eye to it. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the elder, the older generation yeah. just turn a blind eye to it. Pretend it didn't happen. It's not that bad. Yeah, it is that bad. Yeah. Okay? It yeah. really is because it's a lifetime impact that it can have on someone until they can get free from it. That's right. And it's just... Um, you hear of so many people using, but when I was using back then, I would say, I just want to not think about it. But mm -hmm. it was such a lie because every time I used, I thought about it more. It was yeah. probably one of the more things I thought about. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, just get me out of here. Yeah. Um, and it actually drove me crazy. It really drove me crazy. Um, and it wasn't until I forgave that it didn't have that hold on me. And it wasn't, that wasn't why I used crack this time. Yeah. Um, it was really just to have some kind of relationship and time with my husband yeah. because that was the only way I could reach him and have time with him because yeah. he was so fried, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, it yeah. was crazy. And um, I understand that because yeah. I did that with my boyfriend. Yeah. I was like, if I can get into his world, we'll be okay. But then, you know, I'm not going to get addicted to it because I know how to manage it. And yeah, I'll be right. all right. I, I, you know, I can kind of come out whenever I want. But yeah. it's a lie. It's a lie, it's right? It's a lie. lie. Yeah, ice is just not a drug that you can do one time, no. you know. Mm -hmm. It's so addictive. It's crazy. But, you know, all drugs have an impact, whether mm. it's a, a, a medical drug, um, whether it's a, you know, a drug that you need to take, um, they all have side effects. The problem mm. is with this drug, um, you know, there's poisons in there, and it doesn't come with a leaflet inside saying side effects. It doesn't warn mm. you, and it doesn't say what what's going to happen to you and the impact of taking this drug, like some side effects have leaflets, you know. So yeah. when we go into the schools, that's what we're... Showing these kids, we've been the leaflet. Man, if you take this drug, this is what can happen, and this is what happened to me, and this is what co is probably going to happen to you. And so, you know, we're being that leaflet and that warning. Um, if you say yes to this drug, yes, there is acetone in it. Yes, there is drainer in it. Yes, they do put glass in it. And yes, it's going to affect your organs and your brain forever. Mm -hmm. Like, um, you could you know, go into psychosis and not come out. You could end up in a mental health hospital forever. You could end up in prison or dead. Yeah, that's like a given A, almost like a given A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, the end, that's the end of the road for oh. ice addiction. Um, but that or prison, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's full of it. But we are that leaflet. You know, yeah. we're that leaflet that says, man, let me tell you what happens when you say yes to this drug. Mm. And this is one of the side effects. You know, you got kids, you got a family, mate. Get ready, you're about to lose it. Mm. You know, and that is the, the road, you know, the road ahead. Um, Zoe, I want to know what your husband was saying when they took the kids and what what your family and people around you, like, what were they saying? Oh, okay, so, oh, man, my dad had broke my heart with my dad because me and my dad were always close. And my dad didn't, he didn't have any idea. Like, most people I really kept it together. Even when I went to the doctor and I said, um, I need help to get off of it. The doctor I was seeing, I'd been at that practice for 15 years, mm -hmm. said to me that, um, you know, I would never get off of it. You would never get off of it. Because at that time I was I was using intravenously. So that's what the doctor said. Yeah, he said, no. you would never get on it. Oh, get off it. If you use intravenously, you're never getting off of it. And I, and I was so like, oh, okay. Um, and he banned me from coming back to the practice, actually. Yeah, when I cried. That was, like, so hard for me to say, I'm addicted to ice, can you help me? He didn't say anything to me about a rehab or call this or that. He just said, you're never going to get off of this, you know. The truth, though, is that even medical, uh, you know, doctors and pharmacists, I've had pharmacists bring their kids to me and say, can you please tell my daughter about ice? 
I'm like, they should know, they should know, but you know, they don't know what to do because this is such a different drug to every other drug. Yeah. You know, and so it, that, what they've seen is like, man, now people don't get off this stuff, you know, and that's mm. why they get scared, they don't know how to deal with it, you know. Mm. So yeah. yeah, so what happened? What did you do? I mean, that's a that's the most logical thing to do. Let me go see my doctor. I need help. Yeah. Like, and then he turns you away. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Um. First, because I said that was when Doc started to get involved, and I said to him, "Look, would you write me a letter to say I'm a, like, you know, I'm a good mum?" And he said, "Yeah, sure. I know you take your daughter to all your appointments because she was um, had oxygen for 18 months, and I know you're a good mum. You know, I always see you do this. Your kids are well looked after and everything. And then as soon as I told him I was on crack, he didn't want to." do the letter yeah. it was like you were just scum and you know that's the other thing that i found is that when you're on ice no one believes you it doesn't matter what happens to you it doesn't matter if you're um raped or and you've got proof no one cares yeah. you're a junkie yeah. like you know like society doesn't care it's just nuts like yeah. you know your words nothing yeah. like and you know you are worth something and you can change this. Yeah. Like you can change it. It's so simple. You really can. You just have to want it, want it in your heart, yeah. and believe it in your heart, and it can happen. Yeah. I think what happens though is that um, a lot of family members, um, you know, have loved ones that are on the gear, and then because you know when you're in addiction, you manipulate your family, yeah. you lie, um, you steal from them, um, you know, and this goes on, and there's so much hurt and pain that people, um, you know, they. They, they go look. I don't want to know. I don't want. I don't want you anywhere near me. I don't want. Mm. I don't want to deal with you because you know I'm going to have all that repercussions. Um, you know, I'm, and that's why that isolation and that stigma. You know, but deep inside there is somebody there. There is somebody. Mm. Somebody's kid. Somebody's mum. Somebody's loved one. Yeah. Um, somebody's child. So it's like we've got to go in there and and show that person um, remind them who they were and what they were about to lose and that you know they're, they're loved enough to have life and have it abundantly you know yeah. like just we destroy themselves so that's the, mm. I think that's where people get afraid they get afraid you know I hear some people get, come in here to help AAC and they go well you know nobody wants to help an ice addict <laughs> and I go well I, I, except for us hey, Andrea. <laughs> yeah, yeah except for <laughs> us because we've been there no, yeah, we know, we can we're do that. people and we're good people and we've mm. got a heart of gold and we want to go out there and help the others get out but there's people in there you know mm. they're just masked with um, a, a severe addiction and a horror drug mm. that um, you know attack, freezes their frontal lobe of their brain it, it wrecks their neurological pathway mm. it destroys lives you know that it's almost like a possession of demonic activity that they um, that they uh, you know participate in um, and but it's not them they're no, inside there and it hurts and mm. it, there's somebody out there screaming and crying for help inside mm. that person, yeah? But we recognise that because we've been there, yeah. you see? And, but most societies like, oh, no, well, I don't want to... When we ask for donations, I don't want to help, um, you know, I said yeah. it. Well, you're not actually... You're helping a person come out of that space. Oh, you're helping a yeah. person be set free. You're helping mm. a person have a peer support person walk with them and help, help them get a place and help them help get them to be recovered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take yeah. them into a church. Help love on them while mm. they can't, while they don't have food, yeah? That's yeah. what you're helping. You're actually helping set somebody free, mm. yeah? And that's a big difference. Yeah, yeah. That's, what, that's what I was about to say. Yeah, with my dad, he didn't want anything to do with me because actually one time I'd actually stole a car. Um, to, I was on visitation for my kid and I wasn't going to make it, so I stole this car from the lullaby and I drove it all the way back to Ipswich and it's a big cop chase and it was on their Facebook and my son was so embarrassed. Um, and my dad was so concerned I was going to steal his car. Yeah. And I was like, have I ever stole, I never stole anything from my parents. That's one thing I can say, honestly, I never did. But um, he was so terrified I'd steal his car. And, you know, every time he'd speak to me, his first thing he'd say to me is, are you still on that shit? And I would just be so hurt that he couldn't just say, how you going, like, Zoe, are you all right? You know, yes. like, yeah. But he didn't know what to do. Like, mm -hmm. my dad's never been on any heavy drugs, um, which was hard. And my best friends didn't want to talk to me anymore. Like, it did. It isolated me. It made me have nobody. The only thing I had was the drug. And yep. anyone around me that wanted to be around was on drugs because That's they right. want to talk. That's yeah. Right. And that is another uh, false, um, you know, uh, false facade, if, uh, so to speak. If you are a family member that has a loved one on drugs, don't push them away. Mm. Learn about it. 
please mm. connect with us. We want to give you some, some training. There's Sammy Brief on our website, um, Sammy Brief, which teaches you, gives you the tools um, to be able to have a brief intervention with your loved one, to be able to know what to do and to understand the cycle of addiction, contemplation stage, how to talk to that person um, and how to deal with it. We're here to walk with you through that. We, we, we're not expecting you to do it alone, but please don't push them away because the more you push them away, uh, you know, like that, exactly that's going to happen. They're gonna more than you. Yeah. They're going to go more towards hanging out with people that are used and they have nobody else and they feel unloved and you use more and it's like a big spiral down into hell. Yeah. You know, um, it, it's good to have safe boundaries, and it's good to you know put boundaries of love, as Leanne calls it, around you, the families to go. I'm sorry, Zoe, I don't love what you're doing, and, and I don't support what you're doing, and I'm not going to give you some money to help do what you're doing. Mm. But I do love you, and yeah. when you're ready to change, I'm here to walk with you, girl. Mm. And if you want to feed here, have some food, eat, you know. But and and keep reminding them about. You know what they do, what they're missing out on, and the love that they that they have, and that they could have. You know, dreams, their dreams that they used to have. You know, use those and show them. You know that hey, you're losing all of that. You're losing your kids. You're losing your mm, friends, man. Mm. Like we could have, we could have a friendship in the future. And you know, I miss my little girl. You know, could have said you know. Mm. And so, but it is true. Families don't know what to do. They don't yeah. know what to do. They, they don't know how to deal with it. Um, but so get informed. Get informed and get the tools you need um, to, to help your loved one yeah on our website Australian anti campaign.org.au um, if you go to our shop you'll be see their Sammy brief online it's a two-hour training online if you're a family member please I encourage you to do it um, because it give you lifelong skills that not only you'll be able to help your loved one but you'll be able to help people around you that may be entrapped in addiction it's not just for ice, it's just mm. addiction, yeah? Yeah. Um, and that was put together by Optimal Health Group, and they've done an incredible job providing that to us. I encourage you to do it, because if you have some skills, you're better to be equipped to help yeah. the people you love. Instead know? of ena enabling them as yeah. well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, So, Dad went, you know, don't really want you around. Doctor went, don't, don't come here yeah. again. So, what did you do, love? Got worse and worse, lost my kids, and you think that losing my kids wouldn't get me to the point that you need to stop doing this, but it actually had the opposite effect. It was like, oh, I just need to get out of pain, and I'll just have more, and then like, I'd be crying because I want to stop. But yeah. I would, like, if I end up passing out, it was so crazy because I'd end up passing out and missing my visitations with my kids because I'd been up for 10 days, and yeah. that would just break my heart. I remember the pain of that was just so horrendous. Mm -hmm. And, you know, then people think, oh, she's a bad mother. She's not even showing up for her visitation, you know. Like, yeah. I was so, so controlled by this drug. I would use it without even thinking. And then I would realise, what have you done? You've done it again. And I'd just go, oh, tomorrow I'll give up, you know. There was a times that I actually tried to give up. And um, my kidneys started failing. I had to go into the ambulance at the hospital and, you know, I just, I was, like, really physically withdrawing. And they, at that time, they were actually cutting out with heroin. Mm. Um, so it was giving you, like, a real ecstasy kind of feeling, but it was fully um, withdrawals because yep. of the um, heroin, and, and that was really bad, that was. Yeah. Um, and I, I even went to rehab once, and I was like, I just I couldn't even handle that, you know. Um, yeah, so it was just really, really hard. I just stayed in this addiction from... Uh, 2014 until 2017, November 2017, and um, I even went to jail. My husband even went to jail three times. Um, thank God I didn't stay long in jail because I got immediate parole. Um, but, you know, my husband went to jail. The last time he went to jail, every time he'd come out, you know, because it was like if I wanted to stop, he wanted to use, and, and we'd both use, or I yeah. wanted to use and he wanted to stop, but... We'd all would both give in to that using, yeah, you know, yeah, like it was just there was never, um, we never, we we're, we're never united on we're going to quit together, yep. you know, we yep. just oh, I need more or whatever, and we'd both just do it. But the last time he went to jail, he came out and he said, um, he actually, I believe he saved my life that time. Like so much was gone. I was like, hell on earth, honestly, like it was crazy. What did that look like? What does hell on earth look like? Mm -hmm. like some people don't understand what you yeah, say. I okay. get what you're saying. Um, you know, that torment and that mess that you have yeah. to face. But um, what does that look like? 
Um, yeah, so my husband was in jail, so I had this um, real hero trying to stand over me to sign over my house. Um, you know, um, had broken into my house when I was asleep in my room, had actually raped me. I went to the police about it, and there was, like, evidence. And they said, no, you're on crack. You're not a viable witness. And I was just like, man, like, do you think that because I'm on crack, I don't know. You still know what's yeah, happening. That's you right. Know, you yeah. still know. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, none, none of that was made up at all, and they didn't want to know. Um, I was just a drug dealer junkie, you know, that's that's how they saw me and my life was just worthless basically. All they wanted to do was catch me with drugs. Um, but anyway, I just, I knew way too much stuff that was going on and um, anyway, I thought I'm just waiting for these people to come and kill me. But this day I that had actually got to the point that I couldn't see my kids outside of docks because I didn't know if it was really safe, you know, at this point. Yeah. And... Um, my husband was in jail, and um, yeah, I just had this person standing over me, and um, yeah, uh, so this day at docks, I remember my daughter, she was like three, four years, must have been four years old, and she just started to sing this song to me, and she started to sing that um, every day that she prays for me, that I would be safe, I wouldn't be sick, and that I would, that God would bring me home so we can be a family. And her words just impacted my heart so much. I walked all the way from Ipswich to Bundamba. I don't know, you know, it's quite, it's quite a long walk. And I was just like, God, I cannot do this again, you know. I hadn't seen my husband because he was just got out of jail. And um, when he was in jail, we, I went to court for my kids. And he said, Zoe, blame everything on me. You need to get these kids back. Just blame it all on me. Nothing worse can happen to me now I'm in jail. So I did that, but what they did was they said, okay, now I'm putting him on a no-contact DVO, right? Oh, no. So um, he got put onto that no-contact DVO, and um, so, yeah, and he was out of jail, and I was ringing my dad and said, I just need to get my husband to come and help me because I know he can get me out of this. And my dad's going, no, he's not, he's not coming near you. You're on oh. drugs. You know, you're going to put him in jail. He can't do this anymore. And I was just a mess, and I knew... Yeah, if I had him by my side, none of this would have been happening. But um, it was amazing. That night I walked home. I didn't have my husband's, uh, I couldn't contact my husband, I didn't know where he was. And I went home and I was, I'd, I'd used drugs, like I was coming down that morning. And I remember I was so coming down, so bad, I was so wrecked. Even in my visitation, I was like on the nod, you know, it was so bad for my kids. And um, I walked home and I was crying and just said, God, I can't do this anymore. You need to help me. And when I got home, I passed out. I woke up, my husband was actually came to the house. And he said to me, he said, Zoe, I love you, but I can't be with you on drugs anymore. And I was like, oh, what? <laughs> so he's like, just pack a suitcase and I'll take you. You've got to get off this, right? And he took me away and we went away for a couple of weeks. And um, at that time I went to church and I remember this pastor prayed for me. And I was so weak, like I, I, I'd known about God and I knew religion, but I never had a relationship with him. I really never did. And um, when this pastor prayed for me, he just said, um, you know, to, to just cleanse my body in Jesus' name, like my whole body, right? And I was actually at this time, this is hilarious, this is just like the power of God, right? Because I was on, they knew I was actually frauding my urine test. I was taking urine. I was even getting my, my daughter's urine. This is how mixed up I was. Like, that's that. Like, it's laughable now, right? But yeah. it's actually crazy. Yeah. Um, and I was using that, and I was budging it, and they knew, like, they could see me. I was like, 40 kilos. Like, yeah. how are you not using crack glue? Yeah, and, yeah. you know? So, okay, they fixed me up. So, they'd done a hair follicle test. Well. And well. they'd done the hair follicle test, and the first one, they were just like, well, okay. Um, it was just crazy. And because I was using every day, non-stop, continuously throughout the day and night, whatever I could get my hands on, like I didn't care if I died, you know. Yeah. Um, and so come to this part, this um, pastor, um, yeah, Pastor George, a Spanish old pastor, he prayed for me and Dad said, just something happened to me that night. And um, I said, after six weeks, I said to the family service, I've been clean for six weeks. 
And then he just looked at me like, that's a lot of crap, lady, you know. And um, so they said, okay, well, hair follicle test. And I said, no, but it hasn't been 12 weeks yet. Yes. And because right. it goes for a 12-week um, thing. And um, she said, it's okay, we'll see the levels. Yeah. So I, so we said, okay, okay then. So they've done the 12-week hair follicle test. And the whole hair follicle test come back negative. I had no drugs in my system at all for 12 weeks. And I get to it because I was, I'd become a Christian by this time. I'm like, yeah, that's not right. And she's like, you must have just only had like, you know, a point or something. I'm like, no, 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 that's not right. It was using like at least a gram to half a ball or more a day, like, you know, I'm not lying. But yeah, it had actually medically just gone. It just went. It went. Amazing. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that's incredible. <laughs> so like it wasn't, to me it's a really, it really is a miracle because you cannot do that. No, <laughs> you know? no absolutely not. That's just yeah, crazy. Yeah. So, so then what happened? What, how, what happened? So you went away for a few weeks, the pastor prayed for you, mm. you did that test, and then? I started to go to church. My oldest son at the time, he was, um, he was a Christian and um, I started to go to his church and I just wanted to go to his church and... Still, I was still under, because my mum had been a Christian, right, for now 31 years. But, um, I don't know, it's just like I'd been un under condemnation, like, you know, these are the rules and this is how it is. And if you don't measure up, you're not good enough. And that's mm -hmm. how it was. It was not a relationship with no. God. And um, it, it was doctrine. Yeah. It was religion. It was religion. Yeah. yeah. And people don't get this. It's, you know, there's a difference between religion yeah. and having a relationship. And, um... Yeah, and I just started to encounter the love of God, and it just changed my life. Like, you know, I'm still being transformed every day by the love yeah. of God. Yeah. You know, um, no one's perfect. And um, you know what? Even if you've given up ice and you, 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 you had a relapse, man, get up and go again yeah. because it's today that matters. Every day that you choose to be clean, that's what matters. Yeah. Like, you know, just keep going because, um, yeah. Yeah. You're worth it. That's why. Yeah, you're, worth, you're it. worth it. Yeah. yeah. And if we can do it, you can do it. And the thing is, I just pray for everybody out there today mm. that needs an intervention. Yeah, I just, I, we just pray in unity here that that God yeah. touches you like He has to us. Yeah. And it, it's not a religious thing, and it's not, um, you know, a, a putting you in a box or nothing even to do with the church. It mm. is a relationship with God. I just pray that he touches you right now. If you've been mm. sent this video, you need to hear this. If you're a family member that is, you know, has a loved one um, that's entrapped in ice addiction, I just pray for you to start praying because, yeah. you know, honestly, um, you know, the, the Spirit of God does move mm. and it does set the captive free. Mm. You know, you're living proof of that. Like, yeah. I remember when I first met you, 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 it was a short time clean, but I can see the transformation has been huge in you mm. every day, you know, and yeah. like, you know, it's just incredible. Now, you know, we're growing a team in Ipswich. Yeah, it's you know, crazy. That, that you guys are going to be, you know, doing what we do in head office. You're going to be doing in Ipswich, Toowoomba, mm. Warwick area, you know, and um, going talking to kids in the schools, warning them mm. about and to families and and you know people that are entrapped in addiction that want yeah. want a pathway out because if they're pushed away from their family, they're pushed away by their doctor. Who else are they going to turn to? Yeah, mm. so they're going to turn, uh, they do, they, they turn, turn to the arts. streets, or they turn yeah. to gangs, yeah. and they turn to more drugs, That's and more right. drugs, you know, and they turn to suicide, yeah. you know, and, and you know, people need to stop thinking that they're just junkies, or they're just drug addicts, because yeah. they are a person, they're someone's right. daughter, they're someone's son, you know, um, yeah. yeah, and it's just so, like, honestly, I was, um, I wish I could just get my phone and show my photo of how bad I was. Go on. Have you got it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, you watch this. We're going to see a photo of how bad Zoe was when she was using. And she looks absolutely amazing now. Like, she's just glowing. She's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, but you wouldn't, you don't believe the transformation when you, until you look at it side by side, you know. And that's, we see that every day. You know, people come here, um, you know, come to us and we uh, buddy them up with one of our lived experience people. And they walk with them. They love on them. And we then see the transformation in their life, and you know that is what matters—the transformation. That's why we we ask you to support us. That's why mm -hmm. uh, different um, you know companies, organisations, different people um, support uh, what, the work we do because we're not government funded, but we got to keep going. Because but we're going to be government funded. Well, 
I hope so, but we, we, we are funded by God. That's what I declare. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, we, we, we continue the work. We continue mm. the work every day. So, so let's have a look at that. Okay, can we see that? Can you see that, Leanne? Fit to your, your right. That's it. Fit to your left. Up. Yep. That is, like, just disgusting. Like, what was I even wearing? <laughs> You know, like I'm unrecognizable. My daughter sees that and she says to me, Mom, you look like you have demons in you. That is not you. Wow, that's amazing. That's like an old lady. Yeah. Wow. It's crazy, right? It's just crazy. Absolutely. That's amazing, though. Thank you for sharing that. That's okay. Incredible. And I just wanted to be real, you know. Like, yeah, I'm yeah to that's be, right. That's that's, we've got to be know? real. We've got to be real because that's where you've been. I mean, the, uh, um, <laughs> that's an old lady that I see in that photo. I just can't believe. That's, that's so, like, so too much. Or, like when you came in today, because I haven't seen you for a few months, I saw you at the, out, we yeah. had the streets thing, but it was dark. Yeah. But when, last time I saw you at training, and um, and then when I saw you today, I thought, wow, you're looking more younger, more beautiful, more you know, you're younger, you're bright. You're like, you know, God's doing more work and more work, and he does that every day. You know, mm. he does that with us every day. And the thing is, every day it's glory to glory. And, yeah. you know, it's tra- just absolutely transforming lives. And I know that he's doing that in your life, in yeah. your world, you know, and I know your heart for your kids, you mm. know. And there's nothing to be ashamed about. Mums out there, you might, you know, be early in recovery. <laughs> and going, you know, you're watching Zoe's story and going, hey, if she can do it, I can do it. She you can do it. Hope. Don't be ashamed, okay? That's where you've been. That's not who you are. Yeah. That's what happened, and that's not doesn't make a person, okay? You you, you can come out the other side as well mm. and, and, you know, come back and give back to, to help other people get out and, you know, teach our kids about it and, you know, use what tried to destroy you and your, your family, use it for good, yeah? yeah. We've, we've worked with child safety before, you know, that's an area that I'd really like you to start tackling and offer um, to talk to the families that are still in touch in addiction, you know. Yeah. We, we've done some workshops in um, with child safety, with the um, the, pe- the carers and stuff. Yeah. Um, but they asked us, do we want to work with the families directly? You know, I would just love yeah, to see yeah. you doing that. You oh, know? I'd love to do that. And yeah. that is, you know, because you can say, hey, this is what happened to me. I don't want this to happen to you. I can help you change your life, mm. man, you know. And what we do, we put people on a tripod system of support. Um, that includes to having having a counsellor, um, having a buddy, okay, and going to group, um, whether it's NA, AA, um, whatever group form you take um, for, for recovery program. We're actually starting a, um, an ARC group for women and an Ooh. ARC group for men yeah. and also for uh, families, um, a family group as well, and that's being led by Optimal Health Group and our care team here. Um, but there will be a, a place with an ARC where you can come once a week. Uh, we also work very closely with Sisterhood and Man Up. Yeah, um, they're a great organisation. Really, really yeah. healthy. Full of love. Get free, yeah. 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 And so we work with the you know, with the community um, to provide the, the you know the framework around you so mm-hmm. that you have options to help in your early walk in recovery. And if you're a family member, I encourage you to connect with that group because they, they will help you with some tools that you need. Yeah, to help uh, to help your loved ones and walk with you through that. So it's really important to get support. Yeah, because yeah. without support, you know, things can very quickly, as you've heard, quickly go out of spiral mm-hmm. out of control. I know? wish I knew about AAIC when I was in addiction. Like, yeah, man. Yeah. You know, like, I think people need to know this. The doctors, you know. Yeah. I spoke to some doctors of my, you know, that I've gone to, and they're like, wow, we need this. Yeah. I'll back this, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm going to go see Teresa Harding. Yeah. She reckons she's going to back it. Well, let's see her back it. Awesome. You know, well, let's yeah, see that's right. back it. And we've had, you know, we've connected with some doctors in Ben Lee, and, you know, they, they, mm. they were like, oh, man, yeah, we can refer people to you guys, and that's fantastic. You know, we want to integrate within the community now we've, we've um, spoken to Homeless Connect and we're connecting with all the different feeds to provide intervention yeah because unless you've been there I remember when I first got my first counsellor poor lady um, <laughs> and she probably might she be watching today and I said to her one day she's telling me about you know oh no you shouldn't feel like that and I turned to her and I said to her you know, have you ever been where I where I'm just coming out of? Do you know what I'm going through? And she said, Well, I haven't been there, but I've studied it. And I got up and I just swore my head off, mm. and I walked out. 
And at that moment, you know, I was at risk of sliding back because I felt isolated. I felt like nobody understood what I was going through and yeah. I was in so much pain. But the difference is, if you know, if somebody connects with you and you, they say to you, do you know what I'm going through? Yes, I do. I've actually yeah. walked that walk and I know that you're hurting and I know what you're feeling, but this is how I got out and this is how I worked it out. And that it's just loving that person back to life, you know, and yeah. being the frontal lobe, the processing centre, while they can't, yeah, because when you're in nice addiction, you can't um, think. Yeah, you can't yourself, think. Right? Yeah, that was like, um, it's so true because um, when I actually went to jail, um, I was in the watch house for 13 days and it was like after 10 days, like this great cloud just lifted off my head and I could think, I was like, what am I doing? You know? Wow, wow. So it actually, you feel that. Yeah. It's just cloudy. Yeah. You, can't, you can't think straight. So how long were you in jail for? Oh, I was in jail, in the watch house for like 13 days and I ended up in um, jail, women's jail, for probably about three, four days and I got immediate parole. Oh, so I still, yeah. yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> so you really had, and then I had a man has been in your yeah. life, okay? Yeah, and I had a suspended sentence and they thought, you know, I'll give a suspended sentence because she's going to stuff up and have to serve two years, but... Um, no, I didn't. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. He intervened. Yeah. And, and, you know, recovery is possible, guys, okay? Um, yeah. You know, Zoe's a great example of that. And she's got her family back. Yeah, I've got my kids yeah. back. Yeah. We're still, like, my kids are still damaged from it. Yeah. Like, you know, it's, um, you know, it, it takes time to heal. Yeah. Especially, like, you know, they don't want to know God right now, but it takes time to heal. Um. My daughter is so resilient because she's just so in love with God, this little girl. Um, <laughs> her name actually means wise in the ways of the Lord. So, yeah. And we didn't know that when we named her, but she is. And she's been praying for me since she was, she could talk. Like, That's amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> that, that, her song yeah. actually touched your spirit and, yeah. and turned things around through her prayer. Yeah. And how old was she? She was like three. Wow. Three or four. Wow. 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 Think, yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow, uh, I was just talking today um, to my pastor from my church about the power of the kids, the kids, you know, come childlike. Mm. And um, I remember I went up to the Rock Church in Cairns and I saw the kids all, um, you know, come together and they're all praying for the adults and because their heart's pure, you know, yeah, God judges yeah. the heart of man. And so, and, and we were seeing people set free and people, um, you know, being prayed for, healed from, you know, sickness, and it was amazing. And I, I, we were just, you know, talking about how kids, you know, have have that purity of heart, and and God can work through them. And yeah. that's a there's no brilliant. junior Holy Spirit, right? No, yeah, that right. is a brilliant example yeah. of yeah. that. So yeah, that know. was really the Holy Spirit singing through her. That's and amazing. And it just touched you, oh, transformed your it life. It just, it just, it broke something in me it yeah. was like i just can't do it to them anymore like i yeah. love my kids like yeah. you know but yeah but praise god i'm yeah. still alive and i'm not doing this crap anymore yeah. and i'm here to help anyone that wants help that's awesome zoe mm. so we, uh, i'm just grateful that um you came out of that that world alive and <laughs> you've got such a huge testimony that you know and you've got the heart to share with that love with people. Yeah. So thank you so much for sharing your story today. You're and welcome. Thank you for reaching out, letting people know that you get help. You yeah. Know, that um, I just can't wait to get that team up in it switch. And yeah. I know that you're coming here and you're traveling and you're, you know, coming here and working on the streets with us and doing your training and all of that. Um, I just. I, I'm honoured that you would work with us, yeah? yeah. And I think that you're just going to do some amazing work out there, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Well, families and you yeah. just uh, child safety. They yeah, need I love, you. I would love they to do that. I would love you. to do that. Yeah. Like, it's on my heart. And, yeah. You know, with my criminal record, I can't go work in child safety. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I would like to say that anyone, you know, anyone in Ipswich would know me, pretty much. Um, you know, for all the wrong reasons, but um, so you will know by watching this, this yeah. is real, this yeah. is the Zoe that was, you know, drugged out, man, like, you can be free, yeah. and if you want to get free, and you want to come and work on Australian NEIC Ipswich, please be in contact, yeah. okay, um, I'm a total new person, mate, <laughs> so I don't hold any grudges anymore.
That's awesome. Yeah. That is so awesome. Guys, the number, uh, we'll give you a couple of numbers to contact. Yeah. If you want to connect with us, it's 1-800-KNOW-TO-ICE, um, or you can call 075-665-6063. That's head office. That, um, we can connect you through to our Coffs Harbour team, our Sydney team, our WA team, uh, our Melbourne team, our Adelaide team, our Cairns team. So if you want to um, join us in the fight against ICE, um, please connect with us. Or send us a private message with your email. We're happy to connect that way as well mm -hmm. um, but yeah connect yeah it's about connection um, and it's about reaching out for help and it's about joining and because in unity we can get a lot more done we can yeah. help a lot more people you know often I hear people say oh this ice problem is just growing so fast and you know we're, we're not going to be able to handle this like we're not gonna, we're not being able to handle it but if we unite and we do something radically different and we stick together and we do it from a place of love love can move mountains and I'm yeah. believing that every day um, one life give me one more God give me yeah. one more you know mm. and it's just that one more um, life you know that we need to get in front of so yeah. you know get, get on board guys um, if you're a family member that needs some support the number to call is 0481 844 yeah and, yeah, I gave you the 1-800, and I think that's all the numbers. Or you can um, get on our website and have a look um, at some videos and some stuff that we do and connect with us there as well. So that's www.australianantiicecampaign.org.au. Um, can I show you, I think you already know it, but our, our little slogan for Not Even Once. Do yes. you remember it? Yes. yes. Not, not even, even once. once. Not yeah. even once, guys. Take care. God yeah. bless and stay clean. Yeah. We'll see you next week. Please share this video on your page. Uh, you don't know who needs to hear this story. Um, and send it out to anyone that you know that might be in addiction um, and that might need to reach out for help. All right. Take care. God bless. See you next week. <laughs> Thanks, Zoe, for being on the show. Thank you so much. It's amazing. So